Hello. First of all, uh, thank you for doing the interview with us. I wanted to ask you, watching today's games, are European junglers the best junglers in the world? Um, honestly, I think that Europe, like Europe has probably like more stacked junglers than any other region right now. Not because I'm playing the role, but I think that uh, we have a lot of really, really good talent that isn't even here at Worlds, like uh, Jankos, Svenskern, and then there's some challenger players that are really, really good in the jungle too. But uh, yeah, I think the junglers in Europe are definitely really, really good, yeah. If you count in Rain over as European jungler, that is. Moving on from the individual players a little bit, I've noticed that Elise is very, very commonly first picked or banned. Uh, you're very known Elise player. I wanted to ask you why you think that champion is, is right now seems to be the best pick all around. So the biggest thing is there's a problem with, there's only like three junglers that are really, really good and top tier. For example, Elise, Gragas and Rek'Sai. And Rek'Sai has issues because he's not ranged. I think having ranged in the jungle is such a huge advantage when it comes on to sieging. And her diving potential is just the best. And every team is playing lane swaps and just in general, Elise just seems to have like such a good build path in the current meta. And she does very well into tanks, she does very well in pick comms. Team, her team fighting is really, really good. And I think overall just make, like, even if you have uh, Borea back buff with like 5 AD, I don't think Lee Sin can do anything against Elise. So Elise doesn't have any bad matchups and doesn't reveal anything about the team comp. So I think that's why Elise is just being first, like highly contested first pick. And I would first pick Elise in any case over probably every champion currently, maybe Gangplank over Elise, but Elise just overall like the best jungler right now. You did mention Lee Sin. You said right now there's a clear top three yeah. being Gragas, Rek'Sai and Elise. Um, a lot of people kind of expected Lee Sin to see yeah. maybe a bit more play. Why is he not seeing as much play as the other three? I think the biggest problem with Lee Sin is, um, I mean he has some kind of comeback mechanics, but it requires you to be really, really good and on point. I think we have seen Casa on Lee Sin. That was a really good performance in uh, groups. But uh, I think just in general, Lee Sin is not safe. Like, it's really, really hard to do stuff on Lee Sin if you're behind, where it's much easier on Rexa and Gragas to actually just body slam into someone, peel with an ultimate, or just knock them up with Rexa. It's a lot, it gives you a lot more room for error, I think, and those champions are a lot better at just coming or playing from behind, whereas Lee Sin completely gets crushed by Elise. He gets outscaled by Gragas and Rexa into El Lee Sin is also a really good matchup. So Lee Sin doesn't really have that many good matchups anymore ever since like the Gragas rework and introduction of Rek'Sai. We're seeing some junglers have trouble either adapting, gravitate towards the top lane and sort of snowball the top lane. And some junglers are having trouble adapting to that. Uh, how much of that do you think falls on the jungle and how much of it is team communication? Um, I think actually going top lane is probably not so much a jungle role, it's just the communication and how demanding a top laner is, I think. I think if you have a hard carry in the top lane, like many of the teams have, and play around top lane, then the top laner does probably all the shots because he knows the matchups. The jungler has no clue about the matchups. Maybe after a while he gets a, he gets a really good uh, grasp on that. But I think the top laner should know all the matchups for himself and how it works. Like if you have a Darius, you have to camp him. If you play against the Darius, you need to help out your top lane or you can't sell him because then you lose the game. So I think just it just teams very slowly adjusting, even though it's so obvious. I mean, from a perspective, perspective, uh, perspective right now, it's so easy to see what the flaws are of the teams. But if you're actually playing the game, it's very, very hard to fix that. So it takes a lot of time. It's a long process. And I think just, yeah, top laners, like SKT is the best team that plays around top lane in my eyes. Just Marin and Bengi having a really, really good tournament so far. They don't even need Faker to show up. Basically, those two are right now the stars. And yeah, it just overall, I think SKT is probably like the best team to play around top lane and have like the draft makes it very, very good because they have like pocket pick Renekton and have a really, really good champion pool. So do you feel like then SKT was naturally predisposed to do well this tournament or that they just, or do you think they would have adapted well also if they had a different style? I think coming into this tournament, the most important thing is probably just drafting. I think we have seen a lot of really good drafts from SKT and really poor drafts from other people. And I think it just SKT's flexibility comes from 
people just ban Azir, for example, and then they have, they're the only team that still plays Ryze in the mid lane, which gives them complete room in the late game. We know that Ryze is like the best scaling mid laner right now after Azir, probably, but only Faker plays it. So they have more room to play um, mid range champions in the other two side lanes, where other teams have to rely on the Jinx, for example, in the AD carry role, but therefore have a mid range carry in the mid lane. But with the SKT, they are so flexible that they can play both styles at the same time. And I think, like AHQ, for example, um, the AD carry, the Jinx player, was insanely good. But it was also like after a few games, you could figure out what to do against them, and that this is the hard carry of the team. Whereas SKT is just so flexible and unpredictable, I think. Also, Fnatic does the same thing. They have two assassins, Huni and Febivin. And they're having like like February especially have like has like a really really good tournament right now. Right. Um, just to briefly touching on the rise, uh, do you think there's a good reason other teams aren't playing it, or maybe they just haven't practiced it? I'm pretty sure they haven't practiced it. I mean, I wouldn't have expected a rise in mid lane, but it actually makes sense if you think about it. Just Victor got nerfed in this tournament. Uh, we don't see them him that often anymore. Just like as a safe blind pick if Azir is picked, and Azir is banned in most of the games anyway. So. It's just logical to have a really hard scaling mid laner if you have like two mid game carries on the sidelines. So SKT is just, yeah, I think they're just a step ahead. And Fib, like, yeah, Fnatic is, we, we've seen how good Fnatic is right now. They're playing against EDG. Um, yeah, I think it just comes down to preparation, honestly, how well you can adapt and how fast. You mentioned Febivin is having a really great tournament. Yeah. You've played against him a little bit yourself. Yeah. Uh, did you expect him to do this well, or do you think he's just gone above and beyond? I don't think, I mean, people say, yeah, of course, I would have expected it from a European mid lane champion winner and everything, but honestly, no one could have expected him to do that well. I think he just exceeded all expectations. I knew he was really good in Europe, probably like top two mid laners, or maybe even the best, who knows. But um, yeah, he definitely, he made a name for himself in this tournament for sure. Uh, so Fnatic playing really well. If they do manage to finish the series since it hasn't ended yet, uh, do you think that they can put up a fight against SK Telecom? I've said that Fnatic is gonna go through groups for sure. And then the EG dra EDG draft, I saw that. I was like, okay, this could be very interesting because I thought EDG might be really good and might be good enough to actually give Fnatic a fight. But as we have seen, Fnatic has no problems playing against EDG right now. It could change, of course, in the series, but I think the best outcome out of this tournament would probably be an SKT Fnatic final for sure. And I think that, oh, that's so hard to call, but I think I still have to give it to SKT because we haven't seen anything from SKT yet. They're, I feel that most of the time they're just trolling around, having fun. You know, even Marin is laughing his ass off when Faker got solo killed in the lane. So they just have. I don't think they have to show anything yet against HQ. It might be more interesting against Origin if we can see that in Brussels. But um, yeah, other than that, I, I think Fnatic actually has really good chances this tournament. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. Be sure to download our app available on the iOS App Store and the Google Play Store and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content.